Let's see. Did you see it? Did it work? Okay, let's see. All right, I'm live. Okay, good. That's good. That is very good. What is that? Sorry, folks. <laughs> you know, when you see your hair sticking straight up, you're like, that's not what I had planned. And it didn't look that way a minute ago. And I can't tell left from right here. Okay, so somebody's on. Is that you, Scott? No, not yet. Okay. All right. So if you have been trying to come here in person, uh, the policeman north of the Masonic will let you through. There's been an incident, so you have to come via Rocky Hill, onto if, and you have to know how to do it, but um, there is a way, so let divine guidance guide you if you're wanting to get here. Oh, Angela, good morning. So I assume you can see and hear me, and I will do a special spiritual mind treatment for you and also for you too, Joe. Good morning to you, sunshine. That is so sweet. Okay, so I, I apologize for the, we had some sort of little technical difficulty in getting online this morning, but it's all working out now. See, we just have to stay clear. We just have to stay clear. Clarity, 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 clarity. All right, Tina, good morning. Good. Oh, Tina, Tina, right? We saw each other in, in Target this week. And, um, and the thing I was buying was too big just so that you know. Uh, and hi, Regina. Okay, so um, there it is. So, yeah, you can trust the size markings. Having said that, let me begin with a spiritual mind treatment. So this word is being spoken for each one. There is something that is the cause is creating, supporting, sustaining, and maintaining this entire universe and everything in it. It is clearly something of infinite intelligence because everything in this universe, everything in this universe, from the electron within an atom to the planet around a sun, everything is moving. And so there is an intelligence that is orchestrating the movement of everything. This intelligence is present right here, right now, right where each one is, because the movement of each one is part of the universal movement, and each one's own personal movement must be in harmony with everything else, or else the harmony of the universe would be sullied in some way. And so it is necessary for each one to be guided by this infinite intelligence as to the movements that are in harmony with everything else. And so each one is realizing that he or she has a place and always has a place, and that place is always taking form in movement in this universe and it is always along the orbit of moving each one from good to greater good because the impulse, the tendency, the, the trajectory of the entire universe is for more expansion, more life, more wonderful ways for that life to take form and to express. And so that is true of each one too. It's, it's the natural essence of life itself and its expression in form. So with crystal clarity, I am now knowing that each one is in their right and perfect place for the highest and greatest good of all, which includes the highest and greatest good of each one. And that in this perfect place, there is always the next step forward into experiencing, receiving, accepting, and expressing greater good. This good includes all aspects of the qualities of the divine, more life, more intelligence, more harmony, more peace, more peace, more order, more love, more joy, more beauty, more freedom, more power. This is the nature of life itself, and it is the desire of this life to express its nature in more and more wonderful ways. 
And so each one is clearer about that nature of life that he or she is. And in expressing this life in the form of human expression, that as above, so below, and everywhere in between. And so what is the law of the planets, the law of the electrons, is also the law of each one. It is a law of harmony and of continually growing expression of good. This is what is natural. This is what is normal. And so any belief to the contrary, along with good reasons and evidence, are all a part of what retards, restricts, or blocks that natural movement of life's expression from good to greater good. And so anything in anyone that disbelieves moving from good to greater good, and in any particular way that one has identified as this is different, this doesn't follow the law, or this is outside of life or God, is all by this word erased. And in that erasure, it is vanished, it is gone. And what remains is what is eternally and omnipresent truth, that the all good is omnipresent, that this life is an expressor of its joy and its love. And it expresses in ways and means of harmony. Any belief in the ends justify the means is erased, evaporated, and vanished because cause is first. And cause, with its means, produce the exact replica in its ends. And so each one is connecting with that which is the all good, that pure loving goodness, that peace and harmony, that divine urge for the highest and greatest good of all. And in claiming these qualities, claiming the truth of the divine being as being the truth of each one, each one is naturally and normally, harmoniously and happily guided on this planet amongst human beings, to, along with all of the human affairs, each one is divinely guided in an experience of higher and greater good always, but also is guided in contributing and participating in this movement of higher and greater good into humanity. And so each one is always in the right place at the right time for the highest and the greatest good of all. And each one in that place is always guided with the right word to say, the right activity to do for the highest and greatest good of all. And each one is in this divinely given orbit, always in peace, always in harmony, guided, guarded, and protected, so that each one is an influencer in humanity by right of the highest consciousness. And so each one is claiming the very highest, the ultimate consciousness, the consciousness of the divine, of the all good, of pure, wholesome, loving goodness. And in this awareness and intention, each one is somehow always being a blessing to the world, to humanity, just because of this inner alignment with the divine. And so each one knows that they are a blessing and each one is empowered, inspired, and strengthened and also confident in expressing their truth, in living their truth, and in choosing their truth for themselves and for others. And with this confidence, with this divine knowing, each one is clear in the conviction that Life is all good. And that just knowing and agreeing and cooperating with that truth of all goodness, everything in expression, particularly everything in expression in humanity, and most particularly everything that is expressed in each one's individual world, is a greater expression of harmony, of peace, of love, of joy, of success, of wealth, 
support, abundance, of health and vitality, of freedom, of delight, of living a life that is divinely intended, a life that one loves completely in a world that each one loves completely. The loving is first cause, and that is present within each one. All else that follows is a creation of that divine, omnipresent, loving law. I am grateful that this is so. I release this word to that loving law. It's done, and so it is. And that's the way it is. Reverend Rich, take us away. here at the Center for Spiritual Living Princeton. And we are a loving, healing, and inclusive community which teaches and practices the principles of science of mind for the well-being and spiritual growth of ourselves and the world. And I'm so excited to be here with all of you today. We have some great announcements, amazing things happening here. So this week, um, Susan's inspiration class is canceled, so there is no class this week. We resume again next Tuesday on the 22nd. And then after that, we will be starting our foundations class. And so I'll tell you just a little bit about that. So there will be a flyer on our website and on our Facebook group, so you can get all the information there as well, a quick little, little sneak peek at it. Um, you're going to join Susan Neat, who is a practitioner here, on a 10-week loving journey of self-discovery and revelation within an experiential format of lecture, discussion, sharing, and process. In this foundations class, learn the nine principles, spiritual principles and practices that can change your life for the better forever. Yes, so sign up now, it'll be on Zoom. You'll join other like-minded people. She'll also be having office hours, which will be an extra little bonus for you. And yeah, so that's one of the big things coming up. So we're super excited about that. And so today we're continuing to talk about clarity. And so I brought some show and tell. <laughs> so I teach mindfulness classes and we talk about mindfulness. This is one of the things that I use. So this jar in a way is like our mind. Right? And so in our mind we have this clarity, this water that's, that's clear. Mine's tinted blue but pretend it's clear. And things happen, right? And so we've got all these thoughts and it's like that glitter and it swirls around in our head. So if something happens, these thoughts are going around. Now that thing that happened could be a thought that led to another thought that led to another thought. And then all these emotions and these feelings, and they're swirling, and guess what? I can't see clearly. Can you see clearly? No. No. So if we stop and we settle, we let the glitter settle down to the bottom. So we notice those, those thoughts. We notice that they're spinning. 
And when we notice them, sometimes just that awareness of them allows them to settle so that we can see clearly. Because that spiritual truth, that's always there. That's always there. It's in the background. But sometimes those other things happening, they get in the way. And so today, I was driving to church, to center, and I got a text from Reverend Karen to go around to the north. And I was like, okay, cool. So which way's north? <laughs> so I called Susan because I was right about to turn. And I was like, okay, well, it's not this way because there's a lot of police cars here and I definitely can't turn. And so Susan explained to me which way to go. And so normally when that happens, I get a little bit panicked because I like to know where I'm going. And I like to, I like to know what I'm being charged and feel like I know. And then I remembered, oh, I'm doing this. All the thoughts, all the worry, all the emotion. And I couldn't see clear. And I was like, no, no, no. I am divinely guided and guarded. The path is already made clear for me. And so I'm listening to that divine guidance. Susan gave me some directions and I figured it out. And the path was clear. I could see where to go. And I made it here. Like now. Yay. <laughs> so let's take a minute to let our glitter settle. What kind of glitter do we have today? What's swirling around? Maybe just take note of that. And we can just kind of watch that glitter jar in our minds. Letting those little pits of glitter settle to the bottom so that we can see that truth again. Maybe noticing what truth it is that you're meant to see today. What is it that you need? I think you enjoy our service today. Hmm. So I picked out a song and then Stephanie started talking and I said, this song's not going to work. <laughs> and I, then I got rid of all those glittering thoughts, and I listened to what she was saying, and I think it will work a little bit. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And along the lines of helping the glitter settle, I have a meditation for inner peace by Max Heistie that I'm going to read to you today. Okay, let's take a deep breath. Of course, exhale. Make yourself comfortable and close your eyes. Inner peace is all about letting go, relaxing, letting go more and relaxing more. You can do this now. Take another slow deep breath and let go of any tension as you feel yourself sinking into your chair, becoming still more comfortable and relaxed. Take another slow deep breath and release your thoughts, letting them drift far away. Let's take
take one more slow deep breath and know that in this moment all is well notice your connection to the ground either through the bottom of your feet or the bottom of your seat as you feel the energy of the earth softly flowing into you supporting you and grounding you and imagine the energy of life is flowing into you through the top of your head your hands and your heart softly and peacefully picture this energy of life as a soft green colored light filling your body your mind and your emotions now notice your breathing and allow it to become deeper and slower as you breathe in breathe in the word deep and as you breathe out breathe out the word peace Take a few moments to continue to follow your breath in and out with the words deep peace. If other thoughts come in, simply let them go and refocus on deep and peace, breathing in and out. Do this for a moment. Now consider one thing in your life that tends to disturb you. And imagine you are holding that situation gently in your heart, surrounded by the soft green light. Without trying to analyze, change, or control that situation, just hold it softly in your heart and breathe the words deep, and peace in and out of that situation. Very often, the things that disturb us either change, dissolve, or cease to disturb us if we lighten the way we think about them. So for now, for the sake of your own inner peace, just continue to hold that situation softly in your heart in the green light and breathe the words deep and peace. Do this for a moment. Now allow that situation to fade and focus only on the soft green light and breathing it in and out with the words deep and peace. It will soon be time to bring this inner journey to a close. So take a moment and thank yourself for giving yourself this gift. Slowly bring your awareness gently back into your physical surroundings. Take your time. Feel your chair supporting you as I speak this truth for each one here. There is one source of infinite good this good comes in every shape, form, every source, even some types of good that we are yet unaware of, every imaginable and then some. This all good is the infinite spirit God who is all good, everywhere present, all knowing. The infinite spirit indwells each one because God is everywhere present. God is present in every cell, 
every organ, every atom, every function of each one's physical being, each one thinks with the mind of God, each one's emotional heart is clear, lifted, cleansed by the green light, and each one is immersed in the infinite peace of God. This peace is so deep. It is so powerful. It is beyond human understanding. And this peace is each one's natural state. And so as the glitter of life, the glitters of life settle down and the green light moves through every part of each one's being. Each one is revived and renewed, restored to the perfect blueprint, God's perfect idea. This is unfolding right here and right now. And anything unlike this peace, this magnificence of spirit, is easily released, let go, and more of God's goodness enters this space to create more good in each one's life. This is the truth. It is now released into God's loving law. The law knows how to make it so, and together we say, and so it is. More wonderful music by Reverend Rich. This is not good guitar with it. been talking about clarity last Sunday and 
today and during the Tessera Conta or Lenten season, we're focusing on clarity. And we are already experiencing the benefits of greater clarity because when we are clearer, we can make better decisions or sometimes we can make a decision because sometimes when we're all that metallic sprinkly stuff is swirling around or, you know for me I get paralyzed I can't make any decision I just like keep going around going I don't know I don't know and um, there's a there's a little video that uh, I like watching every once in a while they have this cute little dog and the two owners, mother and father, owners, whatever, they put the dog down and then each of the owners runs in a different direction away from the dog, equally apart. And the dog is just sitting there going, can't make up its mind, equal choices, I want them both, can't choose, and so just stay still. And so we experience that too, when we are confused, when we've got those competing choices to make or or maybe when we're confused, we can't see any choice to make. And clarity always helps us see the way that was always there, always see the path, always see our next step. And clarity goes uh, even deeper in that when we get clearer about ourselves and who we are, we are able to do that which we could not do before. Um, if, if we are getting true clarity about our true identity. And today we're going to talk about the kinds of self-identities that are not helpful in our, we get clear, but not helpful in our expressing our greater good. In other words, we can be clear about what we desire, but some self-labels might get in the way of our fulfilling that desire. So last week we talked about identifying with the infinite self that dwells within us. It's critical for our highest and greatest good that we get crystal clear about our spiritual identity. I am that I am, infinite possibilities. There is always a way that, that there's infinite ways to express yourself to fulfill the desires that are in your heart. And that doors, you know, they have that saying, when one door closed, another one opens. Or, But the thing is, is that there's infinite doors. It's just, just two doors. There's infinite doors. So we want to be open to experiencing more and more of who we truly are and what gets in our way is confusion, as well as some labels that we think are accurate in describing us, but maybe they're no longer helpful. Maybe we've outgrown them. So I wanted to say before I started talking that you might want to get something to write with, um, to jot notes, because I'm hoping that each one of you becomes aware of some label that you've given yourself that you've outgrown that's in your way, and you might want to jot it down. But you know, if you don't have, see some people don't have a little computer, a little laptop or whatever, uh, you know, a little cell phone, pencil and paper. Uh, actually, we have paper. Well, we have pencils back there. And I'll grab a piece of paper, <laughs> write on something. It's okay. Um, or, you know, write on your hand. So the first question that I want you to ask yourself is, how would you describe yourself? You don't have to write down your whole description. I just want you to begin describing yourself to yourself. What are, what comes to your mind? How would you describe yourself to someone you're meeting for the first time? There, you meet them, they say, you say hi, they say hi. You say, no, they say hi to you, you say hi, and then they ask you, so who are you? Who are you? What are you? Maybe they ask you, what do you do? Maybe they ask you any kind of question, but I'm, I'm, I want to leave this wide open because I want you to be aware of what you're saying. What would you say, how would you describe yourself 
when you meet someone you greatly admire. So imagine someone, alive or dead, who you greatly admire, who you've always really wanted to meet. Maybe you've wanted to be their friend. And they're listening to you. How would you describe yourself? How would you describe yourself to someone who needs your help? So what we want to, you know, you could keep thinking about these thoughts, but in getting greater clarity about all this, um, I was researching on the internet, so consider the source, um, and some um, person posted that our self-image is not something that is based on reality. So one of the errors that we make when we describe ourselves is we think, well, I want to be, I want to be truthful. I want to be accurate. But the way that you're describing yourself is, they say, in fact, it's far from based on reality, far from reality. Your self-image is built upon your perception of reality, and that is influenced by how you believe you're being viewed by society and other people. So as I gave you the different types of people to describe yourself to, you might have noticed that you changed your description. And that might have been affected by how you thought they were viewing you or the way you wanted them to view you. Imagine um, that you believe that you're shy and you've been practicing your whole life with a particular musical instrument and you love it and you've had lots and lots of classes and you've learned lots and lots of things but you're shy and someone asks you to perform at a party. What would you say? You believe you're shy. Would that affect what you said about your performance, your ability? Would you say, oh, well, I'm not really very good? Would you say that? So they say that your self-image is something that gradually develops over a lifetime of experience through learning and societal influence. And it is something that is constantly changing over time as you gain more life experience, as you think and reflect, as you learn, and as you interact with other people. Now we all know that we can have an unhealthy self-image. Um, and I'm not even really going to address the obvious negative self-images like I'm a loser or I can never do anything. Um, if you've got those beliefs about yourself, then yeah, let's address it. That's there. But what are some self-concepts that might not be working in your favor? In fact, another site says, asks us the question, are my labels of myself helpful or unhelpful? Are these labels even rational? Do they make sense? So there's a couple of studies. I got this from the Great Courses. They have, um, I don't know, I got to get into them and I got to get some information about identity studies. So they had a math test, and they were wanting to see if there was an identity with gender that affected the results on the math test. And you've heard the stereotype about that, so I'm not even going to say it, right? But what they did is they gave the math test to people, male and female, and before they took the test, they asked some ask them some questions about gender. So in other words, 
they primed the people to think about their gender. And then they gave them the test, and the results were the men did better than the women on the math test. They did another situation, a different group of males and females. This time, they gave them the math test without discussing the gender beforehand. And when they gave them the test, they said that it was a new kind of math test. And they found that the men and women did the same. And it was the exact same math test. People are, people are going, <laughs> it figures, right? So then um, there's other, also a couple of stun, uh, studies about race. So someone um, brought in students, both black and white, to give them an achievement test. And first, he talked about race. In fact, he got them primed to think about whether they were white or whether they were black. Then gave them the test, and he saw a difference in terms of the achievement where the white students did better on the test. And if they, he did it again, and what he said to the students was that this is a special test that is not sensitive to differences in gender or races. And the students performed equally at the same level. And then there was another one at the University of Arizona who uh, wanted to see the differences in athletic performance. Uh, and the difference between race, black and white students. So what he did is he chose a group of them and he used miniature golf, which he thought was pretty neutral uh, in ability. And so he had the, the students come in and play a game and before they played a game, he told them that this game was a measure of social IQ. And the white students performed better than the white than the black. And then he took another group of students and he told them before they began the game that the game was a test of athletic ability. And the black students did better than the white. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because these labels that we put on ourselves, so when I said, I asked you to describe yourself, you might have said what your gender was, what your race was, maybe what your age was, maybe what you do. You might have uh, described your body. You might have described your career. I, I, I really don't know how you described yourselves, but the thing is that there were infinite different ways we could have described ourselves. And what we want to become aware of is, was there anything in the description that I chose to give that actually is limiting me in some way. When we identify with a group unconsciously, like I am female, identifying that unconsciously without thinking much about what that might mean to identify that I am a, a female, I am a woman, that unconsciously we accept all that is a part of the human race definition of being a female. Some of those things I might not like. And so what we want to do is we want to be aware of those um, unconscious aspects that are included in a definition of anything that we choose to belong to to just see if it's best for us. Now, I'm not going to say I'm not a woman, um, but I can say... I can alter my self-label by I am a woman who is exceptionally good at math. I am a woman who is exceptionally good at sports. So we don't have to take that unconscious definition that the human race has kind of generated over a, eons and eons of not much rational, clear thinking that we can decide who we are and what that definition means to us. And it's important to, to think about these things 
because they do get in the way and it's unconscious and it comes from nowhere and we're often surprised by it by you know claiming um i am a woman it never crossed my mind my my human mind that i might be uh sexually harassed and then i am i was actually years ago i was so surprised by it because it never crossed my mind in fact i hadn't even really f heard much about it back at that time uh you know go watch mad men <laughs> If you want to know what it was like, I mean, the thing is, is it just didn't cross your mind that those sorts of things even happened, but it existed in the consciousness of the human race. And because I just accepted that identity for myself without much clarity, without much thinking, without any, any discernment on any level, I took all that goes with it. And so we do that so often if we're thinking of ourselves as a particular culture or as a, a, a descendant of a particular group of people who have physical conditions that people have inherited. Um, I remember sitting somewhere with a bunch of my cousins and one of my aunts said, oh, they've all got the Kushner nose. And I was like, the Kushner nose? I had to like, look, what is the Kushner nose? Um, what we do in identifying and agreeing with these labels that are placed on us and may even sort of factually describe a bit of us, yes, I, I was born from a, a gentleman named Kushner who is related apparently to all these other people, uh, but do I have to take all that goes with it? Um, you know, you go to a healthcare provider and they like for the first time and they like you to fill out this form, the family history. Well, I do what you are guided to do, uh, but I won't fill it out. <laughs> I don't know. I just popped on the planet. I know nothing about my family. Figure it out. I once had a doctor ask me, uh, a dentist, new dentist asked me my age. I said, I'll tell you after you examine me and tell me how my teeth are doing. He's like, what? What? So he told me my teeth were perfect, everything's really fine. The next time that I went to him, after he knew what my age was, he started telling me, well, you gotta worry about, you know, the gums, whatever. I was like, no, I don't. You didn't say that last week, so you don't have to get to say it now. Sorry. So uh, these self-labels, um, largely unconscious, are operating in us and at some point may cause us to agree with a limitation on ourselves. And it may be that none of it needs to be there. None of it needs to affect you. It may not be, certainly, first of all, it's not spiritually true, but it might only be your experience if you consciously or unconsciously believe it to be true. And so we want to become aware of it. And so when we're talking about crystal clarity, we want to start with who do I think I am and look at it, really look at it. I, I, you all know that I'm in dance classes with itsy bitsy things who, who keep getting bigger and then leave the class and then other itsy bitsy kids come in and they outgrow me and leave the class. Um, I've been there for a while. I love being there because I am so aware of m that inner label in me coming up. And it's always an excuse, it always feels so satisfying as an excuse. I can't do that because of my age. It keeps popping up into my head. Very annoying, I think, even though I have demonstrated that I can do that step and that I have done that step, I will hear that voice in me come up the next time I'm asked to do the step. 
I in tap there's a step called wings and you're standing on both your flat feet like this and then what you do is flip them this way and back at the same time you make three sounds people do it really fast I I can't do it why can't you do it well there's just so much weight for me to bring up and flip up whatever uh, my age blah 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 I don't know all the other kids in my class they're all doing it I'm working on it I went to a different class once by some completely different studio I found them on the internet showed up and it was a studio that was run by kids and this young teenage kid had me and one other student in the class the other student had never taken tap before in his life and I was you know experienced and all she would do is say do this and we would mimic her do this and and he was he was doing everything he was learning everything and I was like you know pretty pleased because I knew how to do everything because I had been taking tap for so long and uh, she told us to do some sort of pullbacks and I started to say oh I, you know I'm I'm having I'm just learning pullbacks Wait, she's like just do this she wouldn't listen to me she wouldn't even answer to me she just kept saying just do this do this do this do this so I'm like ah oh, can't shut her up all right and I did it very easily then she did wings and I'm like oh blah blah blah, blah. and she's like just do this and I'm like blah 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 and I like wanted to give her my whole story blah 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 she's like just do this just do this just do this I gave up my story and, oh, and I just looked at her and I did it and I did it over and over as I was watching her and I haven't been able to do it again I swear so those labels unconscious or conscious are deeply believed by us and we want to get really clear about whether they're working for us or not and if if they aren't we want to dig in and start identifying with something greater something better while I'm in dance class I I every time I think about age or an excuse or a reason why I can't do it I go, I mentally say shut up and I just watch what the kids are doing and I mimic them and yes I've definitely improved Oof, the things that I can do that I couldn't do at the beginning uh, but those labels are just there right they're insidious they're still there and so we want to realize as they said that our self-definition our self-image is not based on reality and that it is always changing and we want to become very active in changing that identity our self-identity and it may be the difference from um, I can't get anywhere with the phone company um, or I just don't have the the stamina or the persistence to keep up with my complaint until I get through to the person that can address my situation to just a simple I can do this I can do this there is a way I can do this and so claiming uh, these identities that empower us does empower us and we begin to see this evidence that what we thought of ourselves and the way we label ourselves it's not true as I told the little story about my wings I saw some people's faces here are like what do you mean you can't do wings anymore if you did wings again why can't you do wings again like they all want to slap me into doing wings right uh, so good luck with that um, uh, it, and I shall I shall do wings I shall do wings I wrote it I wrote it on my letter to my future self that all the practitioners are treating about all year long I shall do wings okay so what we want the arrow has already been released 
our practitioner, Jeff Starbuck, says the arrow has already been released. It's already in the air. It's going to hit the target. Yes, that's what we want to do. So, But the cause is the release of the arrow. First of all, it's the picking of the arrow. It's the picking of the target. And it's our intention when we release it that it shall reach its mark. It shall reach its mark. And so to improve our self-image, we want to see ourselves, obviously, as a, as a child of the divine, as a being of infinite possibilities, that anything is possible, that everything is possible. In Signs of Mind, we have a saying, what mind can conceive, man can achieve. And if you're like me, you might need to say, what mind can conceive, woman can achieve, right? And so we, they said that nothing splendid has ever been achieved by those who dared, except by those who dared believe that something inside them was superior to what was outside of them. And so we have a challenge. Um, one of the my classmates is doing a class project on uh, young women becoming comfortable with math. And she was describing how this situation is still there. She's good at math. And so she came up with a whole program that could be um, uh, that young young girls could enroll in and get comfortable with math because she knows it's possible. And so she's got this whole project going to, to demonstrate this in her world and to demonstrate that this truth to these young women. I've been working on learning a language uh, for a few years now, as you know, and the, and the real reason I keep at it is because I know I have had a lifetime self-belief that I cannot learn another language. I've carried that with me since high school when I, I was in four years of French and came out of it unable to speak a word or understand a word the teacher was saying. Uh, I got straight A's in the class because I could read it and write it. I just couldn't hear it. And so I took German. I went to, I spent the summer in Austria. I couldn't speak a word. Actually, I went, all this French came out when I was meant to speak German. Uh, so that belief coupled with evidence, like I tried four years of French. I tried. I can't speak a word. I, I, I lived. I was immersed in Austria. I couldn't speak German. All this evidence is just continued to build this belief, I can't learn another language. And so I chose a language, any language, it didn't matter, in order to prove to myself that that self-definition is a lie. It's not true. And it's been a challenge because that belief is so strong in me that it comes out in interesting ways. So a self-image, I can't learn a language, deeply believed and embedded unconsciously, comes out as, yeah, I'm going to learn Italian. And so I'm learning, I'm enrolling, and then I get mad at the teacher because. And so I go to another school with a different teacher, and I get mad at that teacher because. Then I join a different class with a different teacher, and I'm there progressing. And then I get mad at that teacher because. Then I just lose all interest whatsoever in the language. I just lost my motivation. I'm not interested whatsoever. So that was the past year. I'm just not interested. And every time I asked my wisdom within what to do, it gave me an answer. Do this. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Na, 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 na. Anyway, so I finally did it, and it worked. It worked. I was like, oh, this is a those other teachers weren't able to address what I needed, but this new way that I was shown by the divine 
is working. And if I keep it up, I will be able to converse in another language. Now, I've been real busy the past week, so I, I wasn't able to do that because uh, I was busy. So all of that I want, I want to show is all that. I'm too busy. I met at three different teachers. Um, I lost all interest in it, all desire to do it. Uh, COVID, all this stuff on the so-called outer or even in my emotional inner, all of it, every bit of it, nothing excluded, all of it is being created by the unconscious belief I have that I cannot learn a language. All of it, even the self-motivation, the annoyance with the teachers, the, the, I'm too busy, I gotta do my taxes, I can't, I can't you know, show up for this thing that was working for me. All of it is being created un, from the unconscious, the infinite universal subjective mind according to that belief in myself that is still there. So what's the answer? We need to, as in we said last Sunday, we need to get clear about who we are in the divine, our spiritual identity where anything is possible and there are no limitations. We have to get clear about that spiritual truth because as soon as we're clear, we shine it, that light on our false belief, our false identity, and we say, wait a minute, then that cannot be. It cannot be that I cannot do wings because of age or athletic inability. It cannot be because I am infinite possibility and there is no limit. And therefore, it's possible that I could. And then there is a way from this infinite intelligence to take someone like me with this belief about themselves to demonstrate that what they are believing is not the truth, that they can do what they thought that they could not do. There is a way, and that infinite intelligence that we're a part of can show us the way. And then the third step is, <sighs> keep breathing, <laughs> and don't go into the blame game. I mean, don't start beating yourself up. That's like, you know, then we get into the unhealthy self-image, self, unhealthy self -image. so you don't beat yourself up. You just realize how insidious and damaging and restricting these unconscious definitions are on us. If with this strong intention and, and muscle power and doing everything we can, it's still coming up for us. That's just showing how, how unconscious we've been and that how clear we need to be to move through that. So, so we don't, we don't get all upset with ourselves. We just like, whoo, you know, I thought it was a pimple. It turns out it's an iceberg. Fine. But icebergs can be melted and chipped away at. And that's what we are doing in our consciousness. So, you know, I thought I can't learn a language was just, you know, like, uh, equal to, I don't like pastrami sandwiches. You know, I thought I could like pastrami. Yeah, I tried, like it. Okay, fine, shut up, move on. But no, apparently learning languages is, a, is deeper than my beliefs about pastrami. Fine. Uh, so we know that there is, that we are one with the infinite and that who we are and what is possible for us is infinite with no restrictions, no limitations, right? We hang on to that. We keep knowing the truth and leaning into it as we are knowing something greater for ourselves. We keep breathing and relaxing, and we keep calling on the divine to show us the way. Show us the next step. Show us the next step. And the divine will create the avenues, the support, the help that we need to experience that greater good that we desire. It will, it will create it out of nothing. It will make up a class that is designed just for you. 
When I graduated with my bachelor's degree in economics, I asked my economics teacher, what do economists do out there in the world? And he's like, I have no idea. And I'm like... <laughs> and uh, he left the university and got a job here in the Princeton area uh, with a company that hired an economist. And he hired me as an intern. So we both got to see what economists in the world could be hired to do. And the particular project that they were working on, those economists that were working on it, weren't very good at it. And they lost the contract. And I sat there going, I'm going to learn how to produce what that company wanted this group to do. And through the most amazing series of moves and ditherings, I entered a school I would never have gone to, and they knew exactly how to produce what that company had hired this other company to produce. I became an econometrician, and I was good at it. I knew exactly how to pull a number out of the air that would predict the behavior of something. I knew how to do it. I was really good at it. Um, but it came out of nothing, nowhere. I had a completely different path going on, completely different, three states away from where I eventually ended up um, to walking the halls of some university in August and bumping into a professor there who started talking to me and found out I was ready for graduate school, but I had just moved into that town. And he said, do you want a graduate assistantship starting in September? Your tuition is free. Sure. <laughs> Knowing nothing about the school. And it turns out they had a program that taught me how to do what those other economists could not do. How does that happen? Clarity of thought, clarity of your intention, clarity, I want to know how to do this that I could not do back then. I want to know something that I did not know back then. I want to achieve, express something that no one has ever done before, but I know with infinite mind and its infinite possibilities and its infinite ways of guiding me, a way can be found and I can do it. This is the consciousness that we want to get clear about so that we're able to look at ourselves and in our little homes and think differently about it and as a result, act differently, and then have a completely different experience. It's possible when we're conscious and when we're clear, okay? So you all had a little list of how you described yourself. So the question that you can ask while Reverend Rich is going to sing, um, you can ask yourself, is there anything in these, these, descri these descriptions of myself that Something in me is telling me it's limiting me. Yeah. It's not a help, helpful label anymore. So just notice where that might be. And then when I come back, I'll do a treatment so that we all get clear about it. Okay, Reverend Rich, take us away.
were held in the hands of grace, forever safe in the arms of love. Like a child receives protection in a mother's warm embrace, you're held in the hands of grace. We are held in the hands of grace, forever safe in the arms of love. Like a child receives protection in a mother's warm embrace, we are held in the hands. So let's take a moment now and thinking about whatever it is that you want to be clearer about or freer about for yourself, not other people. Think about you. This word is being spoken for each one. There is this one life, only one life. This life has created this universe 20 some billion years ago in that form and it is still creating it now in this form. Clearly this one life, this one mind, this one power can create anything. It is creating each one and it does not create an expression itself in order to limit itself in any way. In creating each one, its intention is to create a being that is capable of infinitely expressing itself in greater degrees, in greater varieties, and the direction in which the divine desires each one to grow and express and move has been planted within each one as the desire of the heart. And so whatever anyone desires to be, to become, to express, to do, to achieve, has been given that desire from the divine. And the divine provides everything necessary for each one to experience the complete and total fulfillment of that which is in the heart. Everything in the universe, all of heaven and earth is moving to support each one in experiencing the fulfillment of that desire within the heart, everything. So if there is something that the body needs to do, it can do it. If there is something that the world needs to change in order for the person to do it, it's changed. If there is something in someone's attitude that needs to be altered, it's altered. If there's something that needs to be healed or released or forgiven, it's done. This infinite mind knows what needs to be done to bring each one from wherever they are into a complete embodiment, a complete consciousness of that which is desired to be achieved. A consciousness that knows that it knows. A consciousness that has a self-definition that is freer that is greater, that is more able, more powerful, more successful, that is healthier, that is happier, that is succeeding in ways far beyond anyone had ever thought was possible because it is not impossible. It is in that which is possible beyond any unconscious self-label of the moment before. So any remaining self-label that would stand in the way of anyone even attempting to achieve fulfillment of that which they desire is all by this word erased. It never existed. What does exist is the spiritual truth. Each one is a child of the divine with infinite potential and infinite possibilities always present. And the fulfillment of that which is in the heart is absolutely determined and demonstrated by that which is creating each one. Each one listens to the wisdom, each one is more aware, more alert, and each one is more confident 
in moving forward step by step, doing that which he or she is guided to do, and absolutely growing in self-acceptance of this greater good so that each one is living a life that is so much more wonderful than anything that they had ever thought was possible before. This is possible. And I release this word to that all-powerful, all-knowing-how-to-do-it law, and it is done. Good. And so it is. So it is. Yes. Reverend. I can't wait to see what you all show up doing next week. I'm so excited. So thank you, Regina. She posted um, on our notes uh, a way that you can make a financial contribution to our center if you like. But you can also go to our web website, cslprinceton.org, and make a prayer request or just communicate with us, with us in some way. I want to say hello. There's Reverend Damaris, Regi Regina, Tina, Arlene, Lynn, hello. She and uh, let's see who else is here. Robert, good to see you. And Margit, Clee and Angela, Deborah Taylor. Goodness gracious, everybody's here. Okay, and Angela and Joe, don't forget, ask me for what you would like me to do a spiritual mind treatment for. Okay, we're done. Come back next week. See ya. Bye.